Yeah, I do have some questions and comments. Uh, I guess the first comment is that I'll make, uh, since you all know uh, my relationship with the firm, this is the first I've seen this. So I haven't had any involvement, whatever, with John or anyone else in developing these alternatives or looking at the models or anything else. So it's all new to me. Uh, John, I do have a question on, I mean, you wrote off retention pretty quickly. What is the volume of retention that will be needed to make the existing channel somewhat functional with the 100 year flood? I mean, have you, what is the actual volume required for storage? I never got it to work. So. Oh, I, well, well I mean, you didn't get it to work. I understand you didn't get it to work at the park and that's not a surprise. Right. Uh, but they're so upstream of that. Able, I was never able to come up with a number that would, uh, like a volume that would actually work. So I, I don't have a number for you. Um, would well, you have like an average capacity of the, uh, stream conveyance, how much it can convey? I can provide it. I don't have it. I don't have it readily available. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to see that personally. I'd like to see the storm hydrograph. Uh, and the reason I'm asking this is uh, it, it sounds to me like you didn't look at any potential storage outside the borough. I did not know. We did not look at the storage outside the borough. Well, there's a there's a site that's upstream on McLaughlin Run. It's been talked about a number of times. You are correct, and and, and I, I'm, I'm I, in agreement I, with you on that. But we didn't look at that as part of this project. I think we need to take a look at that. I mean, that's a very large site. My suspicion is it's going to provide a, a heck of a lot of storage. Whether or not it's enough uh, to attenuate the peak rate of flow and make it more manageable, I don't know, but I really think we need to see that number. The mine elevations, where, do, you, do you actually have what we would consider good mine maps that would give you those elevations? I can download them. I don't have them downloaded, but the key, one of the, the, the real easy way to know where they're at is if you, if you go to Malakan Run Park, water's crystal clear. As soon as you go right around the bend there, that's where the acid mine's pouring out of the, out of the hillside. That's when the water turns orange. So that's the elevation of, that's the typical elevation of the mine. Well, that's the elevation where the water's coming out. I'm not sure that that's actually, I mean, if you had a portal that you could find there, okay, I can see that, but you know, uh, the mine could be above that, could be below that, and it's just got a lot of static head on it. You know, it could either, either direction. So I, you know, I, I don't know that personally I'd write off that uh, issue with the mine uh, all that quickly. Uh, you did say something about backwater, you assuming you looked at the tunnel, uh, that the uh, backwater elevation at the downstream end of the tunnel was such that it would impede flow. Is that what I understood you to say? Yeah, it, it doesn't get the benefit. It doesn't get the benefit it would if it was a free flowing tunnel. So you don't get free discharge. At the end. You can't, you right. cannot uh, uh, design that tunnel with a slope that you would get free discharge at the downstream end. No, not because of the way the back channel functions. Where, um, where would that outlet at? Um, I looked at, I, I ran, I ran one model where I, so the reason I know how, how this is working is I ran run water with a tunnel that discharged in McLaughlin in McLa actually in McLaughlin run down by the uh, skating rink, and then I ran I ran another one that I it blew the model blew up on me when I tried to get it to work, but I uh, I ran another one that put um put it right right downstream of the CSO at the end of um, Commercial Street. So you didn't look at anything farther downstream? No. Because you did there, there is some elevation advantage there, I would think. Some. Um, uh, ch the back channel is relatively flat, but there is some. Yeah, you'd, you'd gain a, a foot or so. What size is that? Do you have any idea what's, what diameter that tunnel would need to be? Um, let's see here. I think I, I had it here. 
I had the model of it. Let's see if I still do. If I have the model open, I can tell you. Options, plan, plan, view, plan, view. Open plan. Hmm. Wrong model. What is the problem with the back channel? It's just it's just so flat that it doesn't flow. Is that what I'm hearing? It, it's got multiple problems. One of the primary problems with it is it's the flood control gate at the high end of it does not function. It's where is where, when you say at the high end, where is that? Here I'll show you. See, I can show you here on Google. Well, you better zoom in because it's pretty hard to read these slides. Um, it's up above um, the, the school, the, uh, the high school. Oh, and okay. It, uh, where, where, it's, where it splits. Yeah, where it splits, yes. There's the, there's the gate system there is not functioning, and it's not letting water down through to flush out, to clean out the back channel. So, so the back know, channel sediments in. Right. I don't know, Larry, if you, were, if you saw the picture at the very beginning of the presentation of what the confluence of McLaughlin Run and it and back channel look like right now. There's a three foot island that's got the entire confluence filled in right now. Yeah, I saw that. So let me ask you, who's who's responsible for maintaining it? Well, theoretically, the flood authority is responsible for the back channel itself. Um, before Joe was involved, um, Joe was uh, involved. Um, we were we were trying to we were trying to get some discussions with the flood the flood commit the flood authority to get them to look into doing something and we weren't very successful. Who's the is it still Dan Dyser, the engineer there? It's Joe. Yeah, it's Joe Sites. Gateway, gateway, gateway. Does Bridgewell point anyone to their board? Yes. Joe Coward, do you know, or does anyone have come to know? We yes, have a we board. That's where my gravel bar. Here we go. At the Blazio, yes, we do. Joe. Larry, yes, there's an appointee to the board. Who is it? Uh, I, I believe it's still Joe Mesia. Here's. This is uh Jack. This is the the asphalt plant, Larry. I don't know if you can see the screen. This yep, I can see it. Yeah. This is Jack Cardoni's property. Right. This, this is this is the uh, back channel right here. That's the back channel there. So. Is there a weir there? Hmm. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a there's a structure here. What kind of structure is it? Do you know? Not off the, not I don't have I I haven't got my hands on copies of plans yet on it I'm I've been trying I've been trying to find them. That's one of the things I, I would I am I would like to put push is to get this get that thing functioning so this can be cleaned out some. It looks like there's a dam across the channel when you zoom in. Yeah, looks like, looks, looks like Cognoni did something right there. there. Yep. Yep. Right up above there a little bit. Right across the main channel. Yeah, it's a it's a that's a little splash pad weir. That's like a wall in the you're right. It is a it is a dam. It's it's not a dam dam. It's so the theory is this thing was designed to regulate flow and provide sufficient flow to flush the back channel. Right. And the back channel is probably sediment in sedimented in from from yeah. the beginning to the end. And so it doesn't flow. So how much does that backwater impact this flooding model? So very, very significantly, actually, especially, especially the lower section. So if, if you, you had free discharge, let's just assume that you cut your model off and you dropped into a black hole. Mm -hmm. What this, impact would that have on the flooding uh, in McLaughlin Run? It would drop the slower section. Um, just, the, just the lower section. Well, we'll just start with the lower section because that, that part I'm, 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 I'm familiar with. I'm really familiar with is it was dropping it approximately three feet. Um, so and then it, that, that works its way back as you work way up. Within the, with, 
would the hundred year flood be within Canal Bank? Yes, very, yes, very close. Yes. So if they just maintain the free discharge, that flooding in the lower end could be eliminated. And when you say, I'm assuming you mean from like commercial street to the roller rink. Right. Yes. All right. So then when and you then move upstream, and when you move upstream from there, the next section. What is it that's the controlling factor for flooding there? Is it the Baldwin Street Bridge? Of the Baldwin Street Bridge. Because it, it, it backs up so high behind it. It backs about three feet above the bridge deck. And that's just that. that's assuming unimpeded flow, right? Right. You're not you're not thinking that there's debris caught on anything. That's just the, the limiting capacity of the bridge, of the bridge owner. Correct. So right. yeah, so, it, so the hydraulic model goes about three feet above bridge deck there, which means the water is pouring down Baldwin Street and flooding those properties. So if you replace that bridge, are you able to get sufficient uh, conveyance through there? Can you get an opening big enough to convey the flood? Yes, it, it actually conveys it below the bridge below the bridge deck without overtopping. It actually the water comes straight through there, Larry. The hydraulic line, there's no hydraulic jump anymore. And, yeah, I do and remember it, seeing that in the model. And there's no no flooding of these properties up 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 towards Maple Street. That's why we don't have so any proposed it, so, through there. So the, clean the channel, replace the bridge. But where does that make a, how far upstream does that make us good to go before we have to do something more to to reduce flooding? Maple Street. That gets you to Maple Street, huh? Mm -hmm. And the only and, thing we got to do it. The only thing we want to do at Maple Street is. The uh, at the end of the ramp there, we just got to build one of those uh, log systems so that the water doesn't back up the actual ramp. The um, the wall that's in place is high enough now that it the water the hundred year doesn't overtop of it even as in current conditions, but it still can back up the ramp. So okay. if we put one of those log systems, the water from backing up the ramp. So now let's talk about from the Maple Street Bridge. Uh, on up to the park. I mean, we've got that channel that runs behind all those houses. Right. What are we looking at there? Well, for the first three or four lots, it's uh, uh, just an earthen levee. And then from there up to about Coolidge is where the, um, it would just be a smaller soldier beam and lagging wall system. So like a channelization kind of a project. Right, yeah. It basically, basically, the, the soldier beam and lagging wall becomes your levee. Right. You, you set the top of the wall three feet above. What kind the, of bridge are you allowing yourself? Three feet. All right. That's what's required. That's what's required under FEMA for a levee. All right. Cool. Um, so, you know, I, John, I, I really think we need to take a look at, uh, you know, if we can, what to what extent can we shave that peak? You know, if we go upstream, uh, if you look on uh, up McLaughlin Run, up, I don't know if you remember where Cool Vent used to be. It's something different now. Right upstream from that, there's a uh, power substation. I think they call it Mosbach Manufacturing if you're on Google Earth now. Mosbach Manufacturing. Can you zoom in a little bit? Let me see where you are. I'm up at 19. or I'm all the way up to 19. Oh, yeah, you're way up. You're way too far up. Too far up. You're thinking this area right here, aren't you? Uh, I yeah, think that, yes, that's it. There's yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that area, area, that whole area there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of volume to be had there. Uh, if you do sideline storage and you know put the, you know, define your channel downstream of that, you can back up a fair amount of water. You'd have to do a lot of excavation there. Uh, but I think you can get some fairly significant sideline storage. And if you can shave that peak enough, a lot of these other things become much more viable. Now, I realize that's in St. Clair, and that's going to be problematic, but I think I really think we need to look at it because right now, I mean, 20 million bucks, I mean, that, that's obviously a very huge lift for the borough. Uh, but I think we need to look at these alternatives as a fourth alternative and see what we can do with that. But the whole channelization, I really think we need to dig in on that back channel because that just that bugs the hell out of me. I think it's allowed to, I assume it's been allowed to sediment in, and it's been that way 
you know, I want to say since I moved to the borough in 77, I can always remember crap out of that stream there. It just didn't flow real well at all. Mm-mm. Yeah, uh, and that shouldn't that be remember. the case. Yeah. If I can say one thing, a couple of things, actually. Um, I personally own property across from that Upper St. Clair uh, uh, acreage for sale. And I do have the mine maps because I have, I've had them for about eight years now. Um, not only are you looking at somebody, a, de- a developer that owns 21 acres of that property, you're also looking at people or a person that owns three lots at the flattest spot closest to the creek. Bridgeville owns uh, a little bit, I, I forget which, we had discussed it last year when we talked about accessing when Upper St. Clair or the developer wanted to access that property. And build right, we have, a, we have a conservation zone up there. Mm-hmm. Right. Correct. Um, so, but again, that, that whole area is undermined. Um, but um, also to the development that's on the top of the hill, and I forget the actual name of the development, does have a retention pond at the creek. They never do anything with it, but they consider it a retention pond. And I do believe I still have the drawings for that. So, and that property's up for sale. Those 20 oh, yeah. that, that, that property is basically not developable for a lot of reasons. Not right. the least and of which is they needed to take take our uh, conservation land to make some of their alternatives work. And, you know, we, well, we had that discussion. Uh, presumably they went away. Well, they're, they're, they have a different realtor now. So who knows what's going to happen. But so. 